All right, boys, Semph is here. Um, I'm basically making this video to tell most of you why you're fucking idiots. Um, so to start off the video, I'm going to go back to my Quantic days when I uh, played with Dazed, TCK, Hiko, and Frost. <clears throat> and in these days, our team used to basically like kind of screw around and always you know, talk about random stuff outside of the game. So they love talking about basketball. All of them loved basketball, besides me. I don't really care about sports that much. Um, and they would always talk about roster changes. Okay, so they'd always talk about, you know, well, Kevin Durant should go here, blah, blah, blah. That's literally the only name I know. I'm sorry. That's that's the best I can come up with. So, um, But, yeah, they'd always talk about roster changes. They'd always blah, 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 blah. And I used to always call it pubbers talking about sports. And they get mad at me and tell me I'm an idiot, blah, blah, blah. But the same thing applies to CS. These people on my team never actually played a sport. They never played basketball. I mean, casually, sure. But they've never been at a semi-elite level, an elite level. They have no idea who should be going to which team, who would make that team better. They have no idea. The same way that you idiots have no idea who should join a team to make it better or worse. So to get to my point, um, the two major teams I always see being talked about is VP and NIP. Now, Honestly, Nip might take an entire video on its own just to talk about, so I'm going to leave them out, but the same kind of things apply to them as I'm going to say about VP. So when I'm talking about VP, um, the thing that you guys have to understand is that if you're a newer player, VP has been around for ages. Okay, the core three, Taz, Neo, and Pasha, they have been playing since 1.6, they've won um, major tournaments in 1.6 all the way up through Go. Um, they started off Go in a rough state, slowly worked their way to, to win a major, kind of dropped down, you know, came back stronger. That's the way VP goes. And I think the thing that people have to understand is, like, these players are thinking about long-term, you know. Taz is, like, 30. Um, they have kids. Uh, Pasha and Taz both have kids. Um... You know, they have wives, girlfriends, blah, blah, blah. I know Yali and, and Snacks are slightly younger than the other three. But the point is that they have lives. So we have to understand is that you are not going to get um, an elite level performance from a team like this 365 days a year. So if they slump for a month, two months, three months, don't worry about it. Don't yell about roster changes. If they suck for a year straight, two years straight, all right, fine. Maybe they need to make a change. Maybe they need to do something. But VP has shown time and time again that they are able to come back from a slump. And you know what? I'm not even certain it's a slump. You know what I mean? I, I feel like they just care less during a certain time, and then they peak for majors, E-League, the tournaments they care about. Why would they care about some online results um, for a league that has 24 matches in a season um, and a prize pool not as big as a major. You know, it's, it's one of those things where VP is a very tactical team. So in order for them to do well, they really need to study opponents, um, create new tactics, new setups, things to catch people off guard. They swap rules of Neo opping, Pasha opping, Snacks opping. Then Snacks will never op, and he'll only rifle. He'll go from hard lurking to being a little bit more aggro. They do a lot of changes in the team, and in order to implement these changes, you need time to scrim, to practice, to lose, and to reflect on how to go from losing um, to winning. You know what I mean? People don't have to often understand that actually losing is one of the best ways to get better. If you always win every scrim and every online match, and you get to a tournament and stuff starts going wrong, you don't really have, like, a backup plan, you know? So I've always felt like whenever I boot camped on C9, it was almost like our boot camps on Complexity and C9 that went the worst were, like, the best for us. Like, we'd get there in the first three or four days, we'd just get smacked around. We'd have to, like, improvise, create new setups, make gimmicky things to kind of get us rounds, and then you go to the tournament and you have all this, like, extra... Um, all these extra little mini setups and, and strats that you wouldn't have had if you just went in and ran a default and won all your rounds, you know? And um, another thing is that you have to understand that you might see these younger players. <clears throat> Some of you, Shroud is an example. So Shroud on my team, um, when he joined Complexity, I mean, I don't think he officially actually signed with Complexity. He only signed when we joined C9. Um, I'm like losing my voice a little bit. I don't, I don't know why. Um, when we joined uh, C9, he was that guy that would play all of Team Prac 
and then he would go off and stream ESA Pugs and play CS for like 14 hours a day. You know, some random occasional other games there, but, you know, basically he was playing CS like all day, every day. And he would always say like, to me and Jordan, like, yo, you, I don't get how come you guys just don't play all day, every day. And we're like, listen, like right now, you do that, but you won't do it forever. And he would always be like, no, I'll never not play this much. And now, obviously, on the Reddit post, you can see that he's planning on retiring. And it's just like, you know, you might think that if you were a professional player or professional team, that you would, um, oh, my God, you know, I'm on this team. I'm going to play 40 hours every two days. I'm never going to sleep. I'm going to, I'm just going to eat, breathe, and live CS. And you know what? You might for six months, eight months, a year. Me and Jordan, both. I, I mean, I still personally have a lot of hours. I still play a lot, okay? Um, I deathmatch a lot. People can vouch for that. Um, but people like Jordan and me, we used to, when we were younger, play 14 hours a day, you know? We, we rank S, was, wasn't technically rank S, but, you know, they're high-level 10-mans, you know, ESEA pugs, pugging with friends. Uh, back when I used to play the most, it was more common that you kind of just got a couple friends and, like, scrimmed other random premier teams or whatever for fun and um you know we just play a lot right and then when you get older you start realizing that like just playing for the sake of playing isn't necessarily making you better and yeah you have people like simple that are playing like literally all day every day and they own but i mean it, it works di different things work for different people some people have to play a lot like personally i have to play a lot but that doesn't mean I have to play 14 hours a day. Like, um, whereas like a player like Forest or Device, I don't feel like they're put grinding CS 24/7 every day. Like, um, I could be wrong, but um, I, I feel like different people got to play different amounts of time. And th going back to my point is like, you know, some of these people on VP, you know, they have kids. Um, they're not super motivated, maybe for like some online cups, some online leagues. You know, their, their hours are probably going to go down a little bit. They're probably still team prac. But you know when they're going to really put in the work? When the major comes up, when E-League comes up, when a tournament they really care about, when they've decided it's time to put, like, it into high gear, that's when you're going to see them DMing more, you know, playing FPL, rank S. That's when you're going to see people peak. And I don't think people understand that, you know what, if you have a good, you know, five or six months out of a year, that's great. Most orgs never have a team win a tournament in a year. Most orgs never have a team win. Think about Mouse Sports. What have they won? I mean, I'm not calling them out at all. I think they're, they've are they been making great improvements. But I'm just saying, you know, they've had this team. that Have they won really anything? No. There's a bunch of other teams you can use as an example that haven't really won anything. So when you shit on a team that has won multiple tournaments in a year um, because they, they, they underperform for a couple months, that makes you look like an idiot. And you have to trust that these teams will make the necessary changes to get better. So what I think people don't do in this game is realize that, like, you're not going to be the best team in the world every year, every month of the year, forever. So what I think a lot of the, these older teams do is realize that, you know, if you keep the same core, you know, maybe you replace one player every once in a while or something, um, you you kind of want to look at the long term like maybe you do you win one or two tournaments you place top three a couple times that's like great those are great results you don't got to win every single tournament i mean obviously everyone's goal is to win every single tournament in a year that's obviously the goal but i'm just saying like most orgs would be thrilled would be thrilled if you won one tournament in a year and you placed decently at a couple and you gave them the exposure of going to a bunch of tournaments and i'm not going in with this you might look like oh symphus will you know, you should always be wanting to win everything. It's like, no shit, you want to win every tournament you go to. No one's going to a land not wanting to win. I'm just saying that realistically, if you look at it, it in like from like the outside, unless you were like on the Fnatic or like the Nip that won everything, most teams don't win every tournament for a year straight, you know? So I just think people got to be more realistic with their teams. And if you're a dedicated fan, realize that, you know, maybe they do, They maybe they're, doing they're slumping and they just need to get out of it if you've been playing at a high level like vp or nip for five years 10 years doing bad for six months does not mean you need to quit the game you know what i mean and i feel like you guys are so easy to dismiss a player and be like oh well force is washed up he should quit i remember seeing that a couple months ago now he's owning again and people are like oh force is the god cut get right you're all fucking idiots 
all right, these players are on the top for a reason. They might lose it for a bit. Shocks, he lost it for a bit. Now he owns again. You guys teeter-totter, seesaw, whatever you want to call it, all the time. <laughs> Shut up. All right, let the teams make the decision. Let the player decide if he wants to quit or not. It'll pretty be it'll be pretty obvious that a player sucking for a year straight is a problem. But I don't feel like a player like Forrest, Shoxy, you know, Snacks or whatever, any player that might have a slump, I don't feel like they're sucking for a year straight. They usually go through like a little mini slump and they get it back. And that's probably motivation, honestly. It's 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 probably just motivation of, you know, staying motivated for a whole year is kinda hard, you know. Um, especially when you've been at the top for so long. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. Um, for all you people that are dedicated fans and, you know, you stick with a team or players that you like through the hard times and the good, you're real fans. <laughs> Give yourself a pat on the back. The rest of you are fucking idiots.